Hey, everybody. Welcome to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. My name is Justin. Uh, just wanted to give you guys a quick heads up before we get started today. Uh, we are on Facebook. We are on Twitter. If you're a fan of the show, uh, just go to Facebook or Twitter and uh, look us up, Paratruth Radio, or you can just uh, put in twitter.com forward slash paratruth radio or facebook.com forward slash paratruth radio. Welcome, Eric. Thank you. Um, Yeah, it's weird because I can't actually uh, call into the show until after it starts at 8 o'clock. And by the time I actually get, you know, to where I have to push the number to call in, um, the show's already started. And I missed the intro in the beginning and all that. So, Well, one thing that uh, I didn't tell you about because I was going to try and keep it a secret, but I'm going to try and revamp our old intro yeah go on fiverr and have somebody revamp it oh see what we think of it (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's a longer intro (laughs) yeah blog talk or microsoft i should say kind of screwed this up a little bit for us but we're making it work the best we can all right um so for those of you just joining us um we also have a Indiegogo uh, campaign going on right now to raise funds to improve the show for you, our listeners. Uh, I'm putting the link in the chat room for those of you that are um, just listening and not in the chat. Go ahead and hop in there. Or if you guys are listening to the archive later, uh, it's Indiegogo.com forward slash projects forward slash paratruth hyphen radio. Um, if for some reason you need the extra stuff, it's forward slash X forward slash eight five eight eight two zero two, um, and um, there's some pretty interesting perks that we got for you guys. Um, you can donate any, but the perks um, go anywhere from ten to uh, two hundred and fifty dollar uh, donations. Um, we've got stuff like being accredited as a producer on on air uh, during the show as well as on YouTube and social networks. Uh, We've got one for a decorative plate or mug. Um, And the best one, I think, is special co-host on an upcoming episode of Paratruth Radio, as as well Mm -hmm. as all these. Um, Agreed. So (laughs) definitely check that out. Um, Eric, do you hear that? Hear what? Oh, board! So stupid. Well, it's worse than on the. If you guys didn't get the hint, we're talking about the chupacabra today. Um. And for those of you that don't know much about the Chupacabra, um, Eric, it's okay, because you don't either. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any enlightenment at all other than what you kind of researched? or? <clears throat> well, let's go ahead and do some research real quick and find out. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, Chupacabra, there's obviously a couple of different descriptions. Um, some people think it's... Uh, an animal, it's like a coyote type creature that has fangs and is capable of sucking blood like a vampire bat. Mm-hmm. While other people believe it's an alien of some sort, and of course we've already touched base on that uh, quite a yep. few weeks ago when we were talking about UFOs and extraterrestrial life. Yep. Uh, and still others believe that it is the result of some kind of military or government experiment that more or less went wrong and it broke free and now runs amok. Uh, well, in particular yeah. in the western states or midwestern states. One of the theories I've heard is it's a uh, an experiment to cross uh, human DNA with uh, the reptilian alien DNA and right. it went wrong. Um and it, the legend actually is very recent. 1995 was 
the reported first case of this, um, it goes back to 1975 where it was a similar mutilation killing, um, or I guess not mutilation killing, but a, a case of where the blood of an animal was drained, but it wasn't linked to the chupacabra. It was called El Vampiro de, de Moca, and mm-hmm. that translates to the vampire of of Moca. Um, some people thought it was a blood cult from satanic blood cult from back then. Um, and for those of you that don't know what chupacabra means, the literal translation is goat sucker. So real scary. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, in one of the, it's weird because the chupacabra stories don't really go back very far. No, uh, one of the very first reported attacks is just 1995, and though there were similar, yeah. uh, I guess similar attacks or uh, slayings that were found. Uh, they, they were never really uh, dedicated, or I don't know if that's the right word, but no one Wait. really blamed Chupacabra for it, more right. or less. Uh, but yeah, in 1995, Puerto Rico was one of the very first uh, where eight sheep were discovered dead, and each one had three puncture wounds. Uh, but, you know, it, and it's kind of weird because three puncture wounds isn't something that you typically see on any type of animal, but. These particular creatures had the three puncture wounds in the chest area and were completely drained of blood. And I don't know, it's hard it's hard to think of any type of creature capable of draining an entire well, in this case a sheep, uh, of its blood. Uh especially in the short amount of time they would have to do it, you know. I mean if it's killing them overnight, eight sheep and draining them all of blood in which and when I say draining them of blood, I mean there's pretty much no blood at the scene when people get there. It's just, right. you know, a corpse of this animal. So, I don't know. I, I guess it's possible. Uh, it seems more to me like maybe just mutilations by humans or, you know, in a cause of some sort that used needles and extracted the blood from the creatures or from the animals. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah. Um, well, doing the little bit of research that I did today, because I kind of vaguely have a understanding of the chupacabra, but the one, uh, the one thing that kind of touches base on the skeptical side of things is, um, it says the reports of the blood sucking by the chupacabra were never confirmed by necropsy. The only way to conclude the, that the animal was drained of blood an analysis by, by a veterinarian of 300 reported victims of the chupacabra found that they had not been drained of blood. Hmm. But if there were puncture wounds, where did the blood that escaped go? So you would think that a good it, question. <laughs> yeah, you would think if there was puncture wounds in the jugular or in the neck, which has massive amounts of vessels, there would, seem, would, there would be some type of blood loss on the scene. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. This is a, a really recent um, cryptid to come up, even though there's one that dates back to 1975 that's similar to these cases where like 150 farm animals uh, or pets were reported killed. Um, yeah. To me, this sounds kind of close to what Chris O'Brien was saying about the owl mutilation. That uh, there's somebody tracking something in the environment and mutilating animals to, I guess, for lack of a better term, survival of the fittest, so that the human race can survive without overpopulation of animals. Um, right. But just like the mutilation killings, there's unexplained things like, even though it's saying that um, there was no 
completely draining of the blood. Um, there was quite a few that, like I said, as far as I see, there's no unexplained pool, or there's no pool of blood as far as I'm seeing in the research. Right, right. Um, well, on top of that, I mean, some of the research has shown that you know that the organs are sometimes taken out too, that they're missing, and yeah. that these organs are pulled through those same three small holes. Now, when you look at an organ, you think of organs, and you think of like the liver, the heart. You're not going to be able to pull it out of you know two tiny holes or three tiny holes. Yeah, um, it has to be a much larger incision. So, I mean, even if there was a creature that was able to do that, you would have to have a uh, a venom, kind of like a spider, to deteriorate the inside and turn it to mush so that it would then be able to suck it out. Right. You know what I mean? But even then, I mean, the rest of the, I mean, especially something that big, um, there would be a lot of, uh, I guess, for as gross as it is, as it is a lot of rotting tissue on the outside where the bite is. Well, you would think that there would be that either way. Um, and we have our special co-host finally calling in, so maybe he can give us sight to that. Hey, Cameron. Hello. Uh, I blew my mind. I just realized it was seven time he called in. <laughs> That's all right. So, shame, all right. shame, shame, shame. Bring me up to speed. What happened so far? We're I just heard a discussing. little bit. You're talking about organs being drained and stuff. Well, we're just discussing the different theories that there are, what the chupacabra is. Um, some theories are, or some cases are showing that the animals aren't completely drained of blood. There's some that say that they were. Um, some people believe that uh, there was a case in 1975 that is similar to the Chupacabra case from 1995. So they are thinking that it could be the Chupacabra. They also called it the Vampire of um, Mocha in 1975. Um, what are some of the things that you know of? Well, I know several different things about Chupacabras. And I think I, I have a theory behind, like, some of them, the blood wasn't completely drained. You know, you know, there are people saying that the blood was completely drained. So, you know, that would make me come to a conclusion that maybe it wasn't done. And it had to leave because, you know, maybe the person was coming and noticed, you know, whoever or something scared it off before it could finish feeding on whatever it killed. So and I think that's maybe a reason behind why not all the blood was drained on some of them. And the organ thing, uh, I don't know. The venom, that's a very good statement, and that's that's a good hypothesis. I don't know. It's a tough, it's a tough, you know, thing to try and explain, you know, try to come up with a reason behind Yeah, well, uh, that's what I got so far. One of the theories that Eric covered, which we kind of covered, as he said, in an earlier episode with the UFOs and aliens, is that it's a, an extraterrestrial of some kind. Um, and that's something that you had told me that you thought it might be. Why Why do you think that that could be a, a better theory? Well, you see... When something is terrestrial, as you know, it means it's from this earth. Do you do you know of anything else even close to the chupacabra? I mean, that's that's why I think it's the extraterrestrial. Because there's, you know, it's chupacabra, even if it's this one animal or, you know, maybe it's multiple, maybe it's breeding and, ha and raising, you know, pups because it's supposed to be a dog. You know, it's it's hard to say. And I guess for me, the best way to rationalize it is, extraterrestrial because you know it's obviously not from around here there's nothing else close right you know and even in mexico that's in the middle of a continent you know it's 
you know, animals evolve around each other at around the same rate. You know, if it was in the middle of a continent and it's obviously a superb hunter, you know, why wouldn't there be more of them? You know, it's obviously very good at what it does, so you'd think there would be a lot of them, but there isn't, and that's an interesting thing that maybe it's a recent creature, you know, when the attack started, maybe it was just released on our planet then. You know, it's a hard thing to rationalize and think about. I agree. Um, all right, we'll take our first quick break here, um, and we'll evolve our conversation from that. Uh, folks, you're listening to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. We're going to have Eric's random fact of the day, and uh, we will be right back. Now, Eric's random fact of the day. How the Grinch Stole Christmas has become one of the most iconic television shows to air around the Christmas season. It premiered on December 18, 1966, on CBS and included a song which is called You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. The song was sung by the famous Thurl Arthur Ravencroft. Though Ravencroft was uncredited for his vocals in the show, he was still recognized for many other projects which he contributed to throughout his life. With this said, did you know that Thurl Ravencroft is also the voice of one of the most popular cereal box characters in history? That's right, Thurl is the voice behind the Frosted Flakes, famous Tony the Tiger, and his favorite saying, They're great! Hello everybody, Sublimely Elegant here, as always, and guess what? I know you. Well, no, we've never met, but I do know you. I know you love Minecraft. I know you love the internet. Now, I also happen to know you love colorful language. So, instead of moping around all day, why don't you head on over to my channel and satiate your deepest needs. YouTube.com forward slash Sublimely Elegant. Welcome back, everybody, to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. And as you just heard from our little soundbite here, you are listening to the conversation about chupacabras uh, with our special co-host, Cameron. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Eric, to elaborate a little bit on what uh, Cameron was talking about, um, which we've, like you said, touched base a little bit about the extraterrestrial um, phenomenon and uh, both both theories uh, from a Christian viewpoint and the no- normal, a paranormal viewpoint. Um, for just to touch base on the Christian viewpoint, just like everything else. Um, do you think that there is a demonic presence involved here? Is it just a creature that's out of its element? Um, well, with this one, I, you know, it really all depends. Um, obviously, if, uh, if if any occultism is involved, then, of course, there's going to be demonic uh, presence involved with it. Um, as to whether or not, like, you're asking if a spirit would be capable of draining these creatures, but I'm not going to sit here and deny it. I mean, the Bible is very clear that demons are capable of doing very physical things uh, to humans and to the living in general. That includes animals. So to say that a demonic spirit isn't capable of, you know, decimating an animal in this particular fashion and draining it of blood, right? you know, I can't, I can't say that it's not possible. But... Uh, Honestly, I mean, it's unlikely uh, when it comes to this particular type of thing. So I, when I look at it, I, I think it's more more likely humans doing um, this 
as opposed to a animal of some sort. I think it's it's a lot like the uh, crop circles, for example. You know, so many people thought that it was aliens for the longest time until two guys came forward and said that they were the ones that were creating them. And, of course, no one believed them because these crop circles would pop up overnight, and how can two guys possibly do such a thing in two nights? Or in one night, I mean. And so they set out to prove it, and they did just that. They were capable of creating the same size crop circles that had been popping up all over the place, and they did it within a couple of hours. So I think when it comes down to it, just through my own personal Christian worldview, uh, I don't think that there's an animal involved. I think it's just sick, twisted people doing sick and twisted things. Well, um, one thing that, um, and we'll touch base on this on another episode, but uh, one thing that it already has been linked to is vampirism. um, And a lot of people can link that to maybe even demonic possession of somebody who's doing these sorts of things. Um, Do you think that it could be somebody who is possessed and acting on a vampiric nature? Um, I possessed, again, I'm not going to say it's not possible, um, but when, when you look back at possessions, and I haven't studied a ton of demonic possessions, but the ones that I have studied and the ones that we know most about, there's never been uh, mutilations quite like it. Um, and, and usually when it's demonic possession, the people end up mutilating themselves. Right. Yeah, to that something part, yeah. else, you know? Um, yeah. But when we talk about vampires, I mean, vampires, they, they're real. Not in the Hollywood style. Right. You know, they're, not, yeah. they're not allergic to sunlight or garlic or crosses or silver or so on and so forth. Uh, they're just normal humans like the rest of us. But because they're so hyped up on the Hollywood aspect of what vampirism is, they decide to drink blood just for the heck of it, you know? And there's actually vampire bars, even at home in Cleveland, where people get together, they, yeah. you know, they they uh, test each other's blood and stuff like that, and, and more or less it's their partner, and they cut each other and drink each other's blood. So it's very possible that these people, if it may be a group of them who slaughter these animals, poke a few holes in them, maybe a few straws, if you will, and uh, drink the blood. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Karen? What do you think about that? <laughs> I think that's definitely something that's possible, but, you know, moving back to the, you know, bad people doing bad things, that's definitely a possibility. I mean, there are really messed up people out there. But, Mm -hmm. I don't know. The demon thing, I'm not so torn on. I mean, if if Chupacabra was maybe a demonic animal or a person possessed by a demon, don't you think it would be killing more people than animals? Well, here's my basis on that uh, comment, is... um, when you think of the theatrical vampire, um, say Dracula, Dracula drank the blood of humans because he was um, striking against God and Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ was the lamb. And um, so somebody who was trying to make a statement by slaughtering goats or lambs would be a person who's trying to say, I'm striking out against God or Jesus Christ in this particular way. Um, Maybe not demonic possession, but somebody who's a a Satan worshiper or a satanic cult, as Eric said. Um, Not necessarily a demon or demonic possession, per se. Mm -hmm. So... That's where my comment goes, demonic in nature, because anything outside of the norm of what we 
understand through Christianity and even through everyday life, even if you aren't a Christian or you don't believe in God whatsoever, um, to drink a animal's blood is very unnatural for any human being. So, right. And in regards to demonic possession, I mean, it's I would say it more as demonic manipulation as opposed to possession, um, in which a demon would get into someone's mind per se, not literally, but are able to influence them in one direction right. or the other. Uh, but mind you, people in general are pretty sick to begin with. And it, it, personally, I believe that demons don't have to work very hard to push somebody because it's already there. So, you know, the human beings are already fallen. They already want to destroy something or do something gross. <laughs> um, yeah. And, yeah, I mean, it's just that simple. I, I don't think that – I mean, I think demons play a part. They always have. But when it comes to this particular thing, I think it's just it could just be some sick sick people. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. um, as far as humans – if it were a vampiric thing in nature, um, and I'm, I'm kind of talking outside of my mind here because I wouldn't even be able to wrap my mind around somebody drinking other people's blood or animals' blood for that nature, but um, wouldn't you think that there would be more risk involved for draining an animal compared to a human, seeing as we can test human blood? to see if it's contaminated or not? Um, well, yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, a lot of animals, not, I mean, not, I don't know a lot, but quite a few uh, have worms and other parasites that would be in the bloodstream, and, of course, drinking that would could put you in obvious risk and danger. Um, so, of course, there's a much greater risk. Um, there, there's risk regardless, uh, which goes to say, I mean, maybe they're not drinking blood. Maybe they're just draining them to draw some kind of controversy to make people believe in something that really doesn't exist. You know, maybe it's just kind of yeah. for kicks. You know, maybe it's a uh, a way in to a particular cost system, um, kind of like a sorority or something like that. You know, no yeah. Frat. Well, from the case from 1995, and this is we've kind of touched base on this of people creating things that aren't really there as well. Um, this was from a woman in Puerto Rico, Madeline Talentino, uh, was based on the creature Sill from the movie Species. And uh, the woman says, it was a creature that looked like the chupacabra with spines on its back and all. The resemblance to the chupacabra was really impressive. Um, a man named... Benjamin Radford was doing an investigation for five years, came up with that, and uh, he says that um, therefore that it's based on this woman seeing a movie species, seeing something that maybe horrified her, or it, she might have even been uh, mentally ill or something like that, says uh, the most, um, oh, it says, believe that the creatures and events she saw in species were actually happening in reality in Puerto Rico at the time. Uh, therefore, the most important chupacabra description cannot be trusted. So, uh, are people linking something completely different to a creature that was created from this woman's psyche and just labeling it as the chupacabra because it's what somebody labeled it as, or is there something more to it? I mean, there's cases that go as far as I see up to 2010, um, all based around Puerto Rico, Mexico, Texas, one case in Missouri, one case in Kentucky, um, really a far span as far as cases are concerned, because usually when a cryptid case is, let's take the Bigfoot, for example, 
they're usually in a forested area. There's been documented um, sightings all the way from Washington State to Ohio. Mm-hmm. So, um, and everywhere in between, whereas this is only a couple of states and it's kind of divided. Right. Um, what do you think about that, Cameron? Why Why do you think if this is a real creature that it's so spread out over something like the Bigfoot? Well, Bigfoot, it lives in a forested area, so I can understand why it might be harder to find it. But Chupacabra, you think we'd find it by now. I mean, for the most part, you're finding them attacking in deserts. You know, Mexico, a desert wasteland, nothing really for it to hide. You know, you'd think you'd find it by now, but for some reason, you know, if it does exist, it must be very elusive. And maybe there's more than one of them, and that's why it's so spread out. Because it's not really natural for an animal, like a mammal of that size, you know. Or if it is a mammal, oh, God knows what it is. But a creature of that size that can't fly, it's not natural for it to move in that large of a, you know, a radius. You know, most animals stay to where they were born-ish. You know, if they can't swim right. or fly, they usually stay in the same area. You know, for the most part, there are exceptions. But, you know, me, I'm, I'm thinking that there's more than one because, you know, it's not natural for something to move that far. Not to mention the fact how long would it take it, you know, to get all the way from, did you say Kentucky? There, yeah, there's a report in Kentucky and Missouri, uh, quite a few in Texas. I mean, take how would it get from Kentucky and Missouri down to Puerto Rico? You know what I mean? It's a large distance for an animal to go that can't fly or swim. Yeah. Well, and that's just on the theory that it's an animal in general. Like Eric has said, it seems more likely, which... I wouldn't want to believe it either, but uh, since it's so spread out like that, there's always a huge human factor where people are either doing this for some sick, twisted fantasy that they're trying to roll out uh, just to be hoaxers, which is a lot of cases with quite a few cryptids, at least only because we can't say we've caught one. Um, there's also the the factor of people being vampiric in nature. Um, Eric, do you think since it's more spread out like that, that kind of solidifies for you that it's more human uh, in in nature than anything else? Uh, I mean, it I doesn't necessarily solidify it, but. I mean, like we said with the Bigfoot, you know, if they did exist, we would see much more evidence to support it. Um, and I'll consider it. I mean, you look at the photos that people have posted about the Chupacabra, and you like, there, there's been Chupacabras, supposedly, that were found dead, and they were taken in to veterinarians, and they did DNA testing and a number of other things. And the majority of these so-called chupacabras come back as being coyotes. And mm. some of these are coyotes with mange. And they have a very, di- like coyotes have a very distinct uh, fangs in, uh, in their teeth or in their mouth, which, yeah. you know, it looks vampiric almost. Um, well, when they have mange and there's nothing to cover that. And a lot of times with mange, the gums are receding too. So Right. So, yeah, and that's the thing, too, like, um, if this is an actual creature and they're finding these supposed chupacabras, um, and they're, at least as far as we know, this is what they're saying, that it's a coyote. Um, There was one that, I believe it was in Michigan, but don't quote me on that, that was found um on a beach um and it was actually a dog that had drowned and its face had deteriorated um if i'm not mistaken it was a 
um, boxer or pit bull or something of that nature. Um, so as far as we have come to seeing, it's usually proven that it, these things don't exist. Not to say that they can't exist, but through everything that we're saying so far, there, there's so many factors involved in any cryptid case. First off, is it easily um, hoaxable? Which I understand that's not a word, but I'm making it up as I go along. Um, Fair enough. Like, <laughs> don't make me play the Chupacabra train. Oh, goodness. <laughs> the Bigfoot can be easily hoaxed through um, beat castings and suits. Um, crop circles, as you said, are easily hoaxable, um, which has been proven because people have come out and said, we can do this in a night. Um, and again, that's something else that is very widespread, like the Chupacabra cases, where it's actually throughout the world. So <laughs> is that to say that there is aliens? Not really, more than likely there's a chain of hoaxers out there that communicate regularly and um, can do these crop circles within an, a fortnight or a night and people see them. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, uh, Loch Ness Monster, which to me is a little more believable than some of the other cryptids out there because it's a water animal. Right. Um, there's, I'm sure there's more, but those are the, the top three that are jumping in my mind. Um, I can't think of anything else. I can. That's been hoaxed? Uh, well, not necessarily proven hoaxed, but I can think of other things that could possibly be hoaxable. In fact, pretty easily hoaxable. Like what? Well, specifically, I'm thinking, I, 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 just have, I have so much trouble pronouncing this. The Hopskinsville Goblin, is that what it's called? Uh, that's one that I hadn't heard of that you were talking to me about, so I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Okay, well, it's supposedly this goblin that you find in this town and scares everybody or something like that. But if you think about it, they've only seen silhouettes of it. I mean, you know how easy it is to fake a silhouette? I mean, I can make an alligator out of, with my shadow, you know? I mean, like, you know, if you really put time into it, you can make something scary. Well, like, something and like that's easy. to add to that, most people um, misidentify uh, things because they're scared. So it could have even easily been somebody just walking through the woods. They saw a silhouette that scared them, so they just identified this to this goblin creature. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. Um, and, like, uh, a nice representation of that is, and most people, you, both of you included, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but say you watch a pretty scary movie, all right? Um, what usually happens to and answer this question for me? What usually happens to you after you watch a movie that's really scary? You I can't, can't sleep. I see it every, yeah, I see it things in the dark, and usually I'm scared for a freaking week. Right, and so <laughs> <laughs> and so, so this stuff gets in your mind, and it's the same thing when someone brings up a chupacabra and starts explaining what it looks like. Suddenly, people are capable of seeing this creature. You know, I mean, you're driving down a dark road and you see an animal on the side. You misinterpret what it really is. So it's a lot like UFOs, for example. You know, just because you don't know what exactly it is that's flying in the air doesn't make it a spaceship of some alien race. Right. It's just an airplane that's not identified. And so it's the same thing with these animals. I mean, you, you look, say it's a, just, just say it's a coyote. People don't know it's a coyote. They right away they think, oh well, it must be a chupacabra because there's no other way I can explain it. Um, and people just let that fear factor get to them, and that's what creates these particular types of creatures. I agree. Um, 
I think we're going to take our next break really fast. Folks, you're listening to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. Um, I do encourage you guys to come in and chat with us in our chat room or even give us a call on our chat line, which is 914-205-5558. Um, also, while we're on our break here, go check out our Indiegogo campaign Uh if you feel the urge, make a donation. We've got a lot of great stuff to give away for you guys. Um, and uh, also check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes, guys. Are you ready? Are you prepared? What if some cataclysmic event shook your every foundation? Would you and your family know what to do? My name is Jacqueline Druga, host of the Apocalypse Dennis Show. Join me every Thursday evening, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Prepper Broadcasting Network. PrepperBroadcasting.com, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We're there for your survival needs. This is Bill Hall, author of the book, The World's Most Haunted House, and you're listening to Paratruth Radio. Gentlemen, sublimely elegant here as always, and you are listening to Paratruth Radio. All aboard! The Chupa 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 Cabra Train! Welcome back, everybody, to Paratruth Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. We are riding the Chupa Cabra Train today. Um... For those of you just tuning in, um, just check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter. Uh, we have our guest call in line, which is 914-205-5558, as well as our little chat room that we have going on through every live episode. So join us in there if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns even. Uh, 
just drop us a line. Um, also, if you ever need to get in contact with us when we're not doing the show, we also have our email address, which is paratruthradio at gmail.com. All right. Um, so we've gone over pretty much any theories that um, are out there, guys. Um, Eric, for any final thoughts um, on this, what do you got? Mm, absolutely nothing. <laughs> I've got I mean, we, a blank we've, slate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've covered everything, um, uh, you know, based on what we talked about. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty more info uh, to go around. But, you know, in the end, I just, I, I really don't think there's an animal creating any of the mutilations out there uh, that people are claiming. Uh, it, it's just, it's too clean. It's just too clean for an animal. I I tend to agree there, um, especially because of no blood pulls. Usually with an animal, even if it's uh, sucking blood from an animal, there would they would have to be able to get their fill, and there would be some type of blood pull. Um, right. So uh, to me the this sounds like something more human in nature because it is so very far spread out. Um, and the extraterrestrial factor, even if there are extraterrestrials out there, I don't foresee why they would be draining specifically goats. Right. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure on the alien factor there. Um, Cameron, what do you have to add for the final statements here well as you said there are a lot more things like the possibility of government testing i don't did you guys go over that today just a little bit over the chupacabra being a government test okay well yeah there's that possibility you know and there's other things and i agree with you for an animal this is too clean you know i like to think it was an animal rather than a person. That's why everyone believes the chupacabra is a creature, because we'd all like to believe that it's some animal doing this and not a person out of their sick, twisted, demented mind. I agree. And how uh-huh. could someone drink blood? How is that possible? <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> well, I think me and Eric oh. will agree with you, you there. Uh Yep. <laughs> Um, well, and, uh, I don't know there with it being so recent to like with vampires and werewolves, they date back to 13, 14, 15th century. Uh, even the Bigfoot goes back to early 1900s, even a little bit before that as far as sightings, not necessarily documented uh, cases, but people saying that they saw this thing. Um, And even this guy, uh, Benjamin Radford, linking the sighting to this woman, Madeline uh, Talentino, um, who basically said she saw the movie Species and then was reliving the movie in real-time Puerto Rico. Mm Mm-hmm. To me, that sounds like almost like somebody's fear or even maybe a mental disorder of some kind having a play in it and um, just creating something that's not there. Right. Um, And to link all of these different cases, the ones that are in Texas, Missouri, Kentucky, to the quote-unquote chupacabra just because it's got similar factors involved like holes in the neck or um, like I'll just read one of these random cases here. Um, January 11, 2008, a sighting was reported on the province of Capiz in the Philippines. I didn't see that one. So that's even further of a a span than what I was thinking. Uh, Mm -hmm. Some of the rest from the Barangay believed that it was the chupacabra that killed eight chickens 
the owner of the chickens saw a dog-like animal attacking his chickens. Um, well, first off, <laughs> coyotes, uh, foxes, several animals will kill chickens, specifically canine in nature animals. Um, so just to link that to a chopper, chupacabra sighting right. to me is ridiculous. Right. I um, totally agree. <laughs> But uh, let's see some of the other ones here. Um, let's see, in September 2009, CNN aired a reporting uh, a report showing close-up video footage of an unidentified dead animal. The same CNN report stated that locals have begun speculating the possibility that this might be a chupacabra. A Blanco, Texas taxidermist reported that he received the body from a former student who whose cousin had discovered the animal in his barn, where it was had succumbed to poison left out from rodents. The taxidermist expressed his belief that this is a genetically mutated coyote. Hmm. And genetically mutated could mean that they were inbreeding and there was a mutation in, in the DNA strand. Right. Not necessarily humans experimenting on animals. Right. So, I don't know. To me, even though the there are animals that attack uh, domesticated animals, there's no doubt about that. Um, all the cases that I'm reading right now, not one of them says was drained of blood. So, to label something a goat sucker, the chupacabra, and then link all these random cases to it. Um, to me, it sounds kind of sketchy at best because, like you said, Eric, we're just labeling something that we think is happening, and it doesn't seem to be the case. Right. Um. Okay, and here's one last case that is kind of interesting me right now. A Texan couple who reside on a ranch in Victoria County, Texas, informed the media that they had shot and killed the chupacabra on their property during the evening of February 23rd, 2014. So 2010 was a mistake. There have been more recent cases. A wildlife biologist with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Organization also spoke with the media and stated... I've seen squirrels, raccoons, and coyotes in this area with the same features. They're chupacabra, quote-unquote, a mythical creature that most people see, but what it really is, sarcopatic, or sarcoptic mange, uh, which is caused by a mite that bites the animal, and it can be on any animal. Dogs, cats, coyotes, foxes, and humans can get another version of it as well. So... I think, and this is just my own personal opinion, folks, just like we always say, this is our opinion. Think what you want. We're just giving you what facts we have and giving our utmost conclusions from what we're reading. To me, this is people labeling a any creature that they see, whether it has mange or doesn't have mange, whatever, labeling something they can't explain or just fearing something and labeling it as the chupacabra is much more likely than an ac- an actual creature doing these things. And where the cases are the the animals were drained of blood, to me sounds more like human in nature than animal in nature. Right. Because um, I think, and I don't know if either of you guys know this, but even the vampire bat can't drain an entire animal of blood, correct? Correct. I mean, most of the time they feed off of livestock, such as, uh, in particular, cows and horses. They, they vampire bats. They, if I'm not mistaken, they have a, like their saliva. It has a numbing agent. So when they bite an animal, they're able to just sit there and keep drinking it. Um, and it also allows the blood to continue flowing. But they're incapable of draining an entire cow. You know. Yeah. And if so, that's one fat bat. <laughs> You are correct, by the way. 
there is a numbing agent as well as, I forget the name of it, but it makes blood clot less and flow more smoothly. That's also in their saliva. Helps them. They can literally feed off of the cow for hours and hours and hours, and the cow will have no idea until they're done and they're full. And then the cow has absolutely no problems. You know, it's a tiny bat. And the cow is left alive, right? Oh, definitely. You know, there have been, like, diseases spread through it, but that's the only time a cow has died from it. I mean, this bat is, like, a foot wide at best. And don't quote me on that because I'm that's a rough estimate, a scientific guess, whatever you want to call it. That's probably about right. Yeah, the, the wingspan is usually quite large for a bat. Um, yeah, they're just, I mean, you know, one bat, how could it, you know, kill a cow? I mean, a cow, you've seen a cow. <laughs> how, you know how big they are? <laughs> Nothing like gallons of blood. How is a tiny bat going to drink gallons of blood? You know, I know. they look like a piece of cobra draining all of the blood of a goat. I mean, a yeah. goat, it has a lot of blood. You know, even yeah. if it was like a larger animal, which as well as ups its chances of being found, I mean, so many things go against the possibility of this thing being alive. There are very yeah. few things that bump it, you know, that help it in its possibility. But otherwise, you know, the chances of it being an animal are none basically none yeah hmm. well i think we've come to the conclusion that this is probably not an animal in nature type thing right right mm-hmm. all right um folks next week on paratruth radio we're going to be talking to brad steger about his book oh which one was it uh real encounters uh different dimensions and other world beings uh he's written several books that eric and i find very fascinating so he'll, he's gonna be a great guest to have on and uh ha- did you have him on on your other show eric or did we have him on on our other show um well, and i know i, I had him on mine yeah uh i don't remember i really don't remember okay um I want to say we did because I mean I have so many of his books. <laughs> yeah. So we had I, it, had him on. It's just been so long. Yeah, it's been a while. All right, folks. Uh, you have been listening to Paratroof Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio um, with our special co-host Cameron talking about Chupacabra. Uh, we will see you guys next week with Brad Steger. And on that note, I'm Justin. And I'm Eric. Cameron. Oh, I'm supposed to do this too? This is my first time, and I'm Cameron. (laughs) And uh, we will see you guys next week. Peace.